In the 1920s, a German mathematician named David Hilbert created a new thought experiment. He said, imagine a hotel with an infinite number of rooms. It would seem easy to accommodate a new guest at first thought. But he said, what happens if all the rooms are full and there's a new arrival at the hotel? Are we able to accommodate that new arrival? everybody and welcome back to a brand new video. I do hope you are all well. Let me know how you're doing in the comments down below. Now for today's video I'm going to be taking you through Hilbert's hotel problem. Sometimes it's called the infinite hotel and it's a problem that was created by German mathematician David Hilbert. Hence why it's called Hilbert's hotel. I came across this problem when I started university which was around about a month ago. It was in a exercise sheet that I had to do for university and I got there and I read it and thought no but after doing a little bit of research reading the question again and watching some videos it's very much possible so I thought in today's video I'm going to be taking you through the problem and how to actually accommodate new guests at Hilbert's Hotel. Before we jump into the video, make sure to go and follow me over on my social media if you want to stay updated. You don't have to, it's just there if you want to. So like I said, David Hilbert came up with this hotel problem and he did this to kind of identify how difficult it is to understand infinity. Because the hotel has an infinite number of rooms, the rooms never end. So of course, we can put a new arrival in a room. But how do we do that? Where can they stay? Well, let's think about a few examples. If we were to put the new arrival in the last room, how's that possible? Hopefully you're shouting at your screen and saying it's not. We cannot put the person in the last room at the hotel because the last room doesn't exist. There are infinitely many rooms at the hotel, so the number of rooms never ends. Now we can't just choose a random room for the new arrival to go in because every room is full. But with a little rejig of the hotel, we can put the new arrival for this video, let's call him Hilbert. We can put Hilbert in room one. Let me explain. Here are the first seven rooms of the hotel. Let's call them one to seven. And of course, room seven is not the last room because there are infinitely many rooms. Let's say Hilbert comes along, here they are, and they want to go into a room. I just said that Hilbert will be able to go into room one. So we need to assign the person in room one to a new room. Now we can't go to the last room because the last room doesn't exist. So the person in room one is going to move to room two. But then room two is full, so we need to assign the person in room two a new room and they're gonna move to room three. And hopefully you can see the pattern. Room three is gonna move to room four. Room four is gonna move to room five. And this will never end. Hilbert can go into room one and then everybody in the hotel already is just gonna move to the room next to them. So more generally, we can say the person in room N is going to move to room N plus one. Let me write that down. The person in room N will move to room N plus one. But that was the case when we just had Hilbert arriving at Hilbert's hotel. What if we had 10 people arriving at Hilbert's hotel? Well, then what we would have to do is not move everybody up by one room, but move them up by 10 rooms. Room one will go to room 11. Then room two will go to room 12 because we've got 10 new guests. Maybe I should note that down. 10 new guests. We've got this pattern that we add 10 each time. So therefore room 10 will go to room 20. So the hotel is full from room 11. So what that means is rooms one to 10 are now free. So those 10 new arrivals can go in to room one to 10. We can say even more generally, for any finite number of new arrivals, the person in room N 
will move to room N plus K, where K is the number of new arrivals. And then that leaves the rooms from one to the number of new arrivals free because everybody's moved up by the number of new arrivals. Now, we've discussed when there's one new arrival. We've discussed when there's a finite number of new arrivals. Finite just being it ends, so we have a set number of new arrivals. But what happens if we have an infinite number of new arrivals? We should hopefully think that we can do it because we've got an infinite number of hotel rooms and an infinite number of guests. So some way they're gonna be able to fit in, but we've still gotta think about the fact that the hotel is full. So can we just do what we just said? We just said for a finite number of guests, we can move them all up by n plus k, where k is the number of new guests. So when we've got an infinite number of new guests, we're gonna move everybody up by an infinite number of rooms. Something doesn't seem right. And we can't do that because we can't really add infinity. That doesn't really make sense. So what we need to do in this case is move everybody up to the room number that is double their number. So, for an infinite number of new arrivals, room one will move to room two. Room two will move to room four. Room three will move to room six. Room four will move to room eight, and so on. Now, hopefully you can see the pattern. The new rooms that are being assigned are all even because two times any number is even. All new rooms are even. So what does that mean? Well, a number can only be even or odd. They can't be both. So if all the even numbers are booked up, then all the odd rooms are available. So therefore, all odd rooms are free. So when we've got an infinite number of new arrivals, those arrivals can all go in the odd rooms. So more generally, if we've got a person in room N, room N is going to move to room 2N. We're just gonna multiply their room number by two and put them in that room. So the first arrival can go in room one. The second arrival can go in room three. And that can just carry on. And that works because we've got an infinite number of hotel rooms, so we'll never run out of hotel rooms. And we've got an infinite number of odd numbers. So we're always gonna have a room to put the new arrival in. Simple, that's it. Uh, did you think we're finished? We're not. Consider this, you're working at Hilbert's Hotel and you look outside and let me get this right. You see a line of infinitely many buses with infinitely many people inside those buses waiting to book a room at the hotel that has infinitely many rooms. Are we able to do that? Can we accommodate a person in the buses, and we've got an infinite number of buses, can we accommodate the infinite number of people a room? Well, yes, we absolutely can. Let me tell you how it can be done. Around 300 BC, Euclid proved that there are infinitely many prime numbers. So we're gonna be using the prime numbers to help us this time. So to accommodate an infinite number of buses with an infinite number of people in each bus, we need to move everybody in the rooms to the first prime number to the power of their room number. So the person in room five is gonna to move to room and I'm just using R here for room, two to the five, because two is the first prime number. Now two to the five is 32. So the person in room five is gonna move to room 32. Let's think about room eight. The person in room eight is gonna move to room two to the eight. Two to the eight is 256. So the person in room eight is gonna move to room 256. 
Now I'm not drawing a diagram here because you can see that the, the room they're moving to is much larger than the room that they're originally in. And that's because we're now involving powers. So we've now got the current guests that were already in the hotel in new rooms. But what about the people that are waiting in those infinitely many buses and the infinite many people in the bus? What do we do with them? Let me do a little diagram. Here is my bus and it's got some wheels. It's not the best bus, but there you go. In that bus is an infinite number of people. I'm gonna call this bus one. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna assign each person in that bus a seat number. So let's just take the first three people in the bus. The first three people are in seat one, seat two, and seat three. Because we move the people in the hotel into the first prime number to the power of their room, we're gonna put everybody in bus one in the room that is numbered the next prime number to the power of their seat number. So, bus one, the person in bus one, so we'll call that B1, and we'll call this S. The person in bus one in seat one will go in the room that is numbered the next prime number, which is three, to the power of their seat number, which is just one. So three to the one, that person will go in three. Let's think about person in seat three. So they're still in this first bus and they're in seat three. They're gonna go in, well, they're still in bus one. So we're gonna go with the second prime number, which is three. And we're gonna raise that to the power of their seat number. Three to the three is 27. If we think about still bus one, but let's think about seat seven. They're gonna go in room number three to the seven. And that is 2,187. Okay, let's just, for example, think about person in bus one in seat 15. They are gonna go in, well, it's still bus one, so we're gonna start with the second prime number, which is three. And we're gonna raise that to the power of their seat number, which is 15. So they are gonna go in <clears throat> room. 14,348,907. So we can see that it very, very, very quickly goes to really high room numbers. So in general, bus one, they will go in room three to the N, where N is their seat number. Okay, so that's everybody in bus one complete. What happens now with everybody in the other buses? Because we've got an infinite number of buses. What can we do? Well, we can't just forget about them. We can fit them in. And remember, even though the hotel is full, we've got an infinite number of rooms. So technically, we're never gonna run out of room. The people in the next bus are gonna be assigned powers of the next prime. People in the hotel were assigned powers of two. People in the first bus, like we just said, were assigned powers of three. So people in the second bus, they are gonna be assigned powers of the next prime number. The prime number that's after three is five. So they're gonna go in the room five to the power N, where again, N is their seat number. And it's their seat number of the second bus. And each bus follows. Bus three will go in rooms seven to the end. Bus four will go in powers of the next prime number, which is 11. They will go in powers of 11, so 11 to the end, where N is their seat number. And we can carry this on forever. So since each of these numbers when we actually put n into them. Since they only have one and the natural numbers of their prime bases as factors, we never have rooms overlapping. We're not gonna double book or triple book a room. So finally, let's show this mathematically. How can we put this in a term, like an nth term or a formula that will allow us to work it out for any number of bus for any seat number. Well, we can write it like this. More generally, we can put the new arrival of bus 
and this time we're going to call it bus M with seat number N into room P to the N where P is the M plus oneth prime number. And that's how we can mathematically show it. We could carry this on forever and we could make powers of powers of powers of powers. What the next stage would be is an infinite number of ships arriving with an infinite number of buses on board with an infinite number of people inside the infinite number of buses on the infinite number of ships waiting to stay in the hotel with an infinite number of rooms. I really hope I said that right. And that's possible, we can do that, but we're not gonna be covering that into today's video. You can work out how we do that yourself. That's it for today's video. I really do hope that you enjoyed and that you actually learned something. If you did enjoy this video, please make sure to give it a big thumbs up and subscribe down below because it really, really does help me out. And let me know if you wanna see any more videos like this. Thanks again for watching everybody and I'll see you very, very soon with a brand new video. Bye. If you've stayed all the way until the end of the video, then a little behind the scenes secret, I actually got about a quarter of the way through the video and then forgot to record my iPad screen. Try to start again.